morning, colleagues and seniors.
So, uh, while I have request uh, all of you to be on mute mode, uh, I would also like one or two of you to confirm that uh, you are able to see this. So, the presentation is clear. Oh, thank you, right? Okay. So, we will start off uh, with uh, some disclaimers and disclosures. Uh, first of all, I would like to admit that uh, whatever is in this presentation, there is nothing official, official about it, except that uh, maybe some spots are there in the air in the past few years. Wherever I have quoted an official document, it is there, so that will not be disputed. These are my personal views. And they are, they are uh, some, some total of my experiences in not only the railways, in public sectors where I have worked, board centre and state, as well as my stint with the Tata group of companies. Uh, for some who are not aware, I took voluntary retirement from the railways in 2007. Uh, and then I joined the Tata's in Tata projects. Served them for a few years before coming back as a consultant to the ministry. Uh, surely this presentation is not the reflection of the present reorganization being talked uh, Changes will always be there. Obviously, we hope they are for the better. And whatever I am trying to talk about in this subject, Are sir, not are been there in uh, the likely uh, course of uh, developments over the years. But then, uh, I would also like to say that uh, we should look at change. Change is perhaps the only permanent thing which is happening. Uh, you have to change and uh, you have to change for the better. You always want to do something. Uh, let us now go on to giving you an idea about what this discussion is going to be all about. Uh, first of all, I would like to see uh, what is changing in the FLO of the country, especially in preference to Indian Railways. All of you must have heard of uh, the National Rail Plan. This is the vision document currently under circulation. We will highlight some of these things. I have selected a few of uh, what I believe are key areas uh, where we should be having the change role, a role change for the FHCO. Uh, this could be in terms of strategic planning, goal setting and so on. This could also be in the area of capital structures and funding. This should obviously be into a new area which we have not touched so far and that is looking at the risk management in the organization as well as the process management. Uh, we should also look at what is going to come in the years. We are not very far ahead. You see, the regulator is there on the horizon that we should be uh, coming into our uh, lives very soon. I mean, the regulator for rail. In fact, in my assignment with the Ministry of Railways, I was associated with drafting the bill for the rail regulatory authority. And this, I think, uh, perhaps because of the pandemic for some other reason, this is on the uh, and will let the uh, bank sure once things settle down as part of the restructuring of not only the railway board but also the organization as such. We will be having the regulator in place. And how will the agency fit into that? Finance and accounts officer, how will they fit into that? This is something I believe we must uh, plan. Obviously, for doing all these things, we must have some changes in our uh, attitudes. Uh, attributes. We must have some enablers which will change our own our skills and personality. Let us see whether we can talk about that. Uh, globally, the CFO has a large number of functions reporting. I have been always uh, curious to understand how Fortune 500 companies run their organizations. And I thought it would be a good idea in this presentation to share some of the functions which report to the CFO. Many of these are new. Obviously, because we are a government department, we are yet to get out of that notion. Uh, but some of these functions, I am sure you will appreciate, you have come to know that these are uh, key to uh, sustainable growth of organizations which are looking to ex 
still in their uh, working. So finally, I would like to give a possible organization structure. And this is only food for thought. And I would request you to, at the end of this session, think about this and put down your ideas that you could always keep this going. Perhaps this will enable uh, whoever is at the end of the test to have a look at how they can restructure the organization. Uh, currently, there is need for alignment even amongst our present roles and responsibilities. There is need for alignment. We are very widespread, not only in geographical terms, but also in our working terms, in our rules and procedures. So I think we should look at some alignment so that we are a coherent board and knowledge management becomes the key for sharing all our thoughts. One of the things is through good seminars like this because I find that with a huge attendance uh, across the country, uh, this will surely help us uh, in, in, in sharing our views and uh, lining our thoughts. So, uh, so starting at uh, the first uh, slide, I thought we should look at what is changing in the Indian railway at the road. Uh, you would have noticed over the last decades that the vector and intensity of business operations is changing. Now, when I talk about uh, the vector and the intensity, obviously I am referring to the commitment, the interest being shown by a whole lot of stakeholders in the railways. Uh, initially, when I joined the service, the organization's uh, main contribution was transportation. It was more a social service organization. Funding was limited to whatever came in from the central uh, government scheme. And whatever we could uh, scrape out of that and the demand 16 we could uh, spend uh, depended largely on what was available to uh, you know the uh, Indian budget which it could spare for us. When it came to execution, it all depended on how our contractors could, could work, how quickly we could put our estimates together, and how we could perhaps uh, you know enable better management. But there was also on the operation side constraints related to a very normal growth of uh, passenger traffic and freight traffic. If something we were losing, there were no strategic initiatives for a very large scale to take care of. It's largely because we said, well, we can't be improving the throughput overnight because we don't have the money to do it. And that's how things used to uh, go on. Uh, but now things have changed, and you would realize that. Uh, last few months we are talking about uh, private operators running on trains. We are talking about uh, we are talking about uh, an exclusive dedicated freight corridor for freight trains. A concept which is amazing uh, since it has started uh, already functioning or just on the verge of the trial runs. And this will give huge opportunities for us to focus on passenger traffic uh, in a very big way. You would have also noticed that we had uh, a lot of safety concerns uh, being attended to over the last few years. Uh, amongst our mission statements, several mission statements, we have zero accident as one of our goals, which is amazing. Uh, at one time, a level crossing gate was synonymous with railway, but today we are able to go beyond that, whether it is manned or unmanned. We are now saying that on the golden quadrilateral, we will uh, eliminate all these level crossings. So straight away, there is a quantum jump in how we propose to do our operations. Uh, there are a lot of uh, individual pockets of automation taking place, and I'll talk about that later. But it is grand that we are adopting technologies. We are looking at each department, including perhaps the latest being the medical department, is looking at how you can use uh, the mobile phone to get across to the various customers and uh, employees and so on. So I think these are all various uh, good things happening. And uh, for all this you need money. So the money which was earlier restricted to coming from only the finance minister and also perhaps a little later on through the IRFC to our own being operation finances. This is now gone beyond these concepts and capital investment opportunities that are being now taken up at the highest level. Uh, I mean the IO is putting brains together with our own uh, economists and so on and saying how this 
this particular wing of transportation in the country can drive the economy better by putting more money. So no longer has been that that that, that feeling that oh my God, is demand 16 would. I never dreamt that demand 16 would go beyond a lakh of crores so soon. And today we are able to see it going beyond a lakh and a half. Now the point is not how well or how much of it we can raise, but the point is how correctly can we spend all this. So that's where the thing zeros rule comes in. Surely social media has really exploded. In the past, if there was one reference to railway performance somewhere in the newspaper, we used to be excited about it. The CPR used to circulate that all over the newspapers. If there was a talk given by a railway man, usually it was around budget time, people used to say, oh my God, please come on me. But today, social media is driving performance delivery on the internet. Not necessarily on the internet, it is also doing it on others. But I think uh, we, we have now thought, we are, we are there, we are there under the focus of the social media and we have to look at uh, how better we can improve our delivery. While talking about uh, all this, we should not forget that the competency levels and the skill sets required for running a huge organization where the rest of the environment is changing uh, of the star. These levels, and there can be as much of dispute as we can care on this. I think, in my personal opinion, the competency levels, competency levels have not caught up. We are not up to the Joneses. Other uh, sectors are spending a hell of a lot of money and also trying to drag the uh, efficiency levels of performance of the human resource, which is running this organization. And I think this is one area where we need to uh, immediately put a lot of effort. And uh, on the very part. so competency levels, I think, uh, surely is one area where we are really required to change. This we require a lot of, not only from the point of view of uh, the new recruits coming in, but also capturing uh, knowledge through the asset knowledge uh, portals which many organizations have. Capture the wisdom which is there from the past and uh, convert it and uh, adapt it to the current scenario. This is what I think we need to be doing in the very beginning. Uh, obviously, this requires technology. There is a lot of uh, information and data processing going on in various departments. We need to have technology which will converge on this whether it is communication or whether it is something else. So this is something which we must uh, take care of and this is surely changing in our, in our business. A lot of data warehousing, mining and analytics is necessary. Uh, there is an increase in need because uh, so far we have been doing all this in silos but uh, I was really uh, happy to note that we created a post of a key data analytics in the railway board. Uh, the full-fledged directory, I am not sure whether it is still functioning, but we have a focused attention being given to data analytics, which is absolutely essential for an organization like ours because performance levels have to be captured across the country, the best practices have to be brought out, we have to correlate so many technology improvements and see how effective they are in, a, in almost on a real-time basis. So this, I think, is uh, a, a need. It is, it is recognized how far it has been useful by the world. Public awareness, again, thanks to social media, uh, is increasing. And along with the awareness, the demands are also increasing. I do not think in the past anybody on the platform you could have accosted in any railway officer or could be accosted by any public uh, in a manner as is being done today. Uh, people are questioning uh, the performance. They are uh, not not very uh, tolerant of the problems. Uh, they want delivery yesterday. They want performance yesterday. They want things to be happening in a very good way. So uh, I think this is something which we must recognize and we must react proactively to this. As soon as the regulator comes into place, I am sure uh, we will have to improve on our governance because questions will be asked. 
the regulator will uh, look at the needs of all the stakeholders. He cannot simply protect the board or protect the administration. He has to look at almost all, including the media. He will have to answer, uh, he will have to get all of us to answer uh, what, what is the level of governance we have and what is the level of compliance we are showing. So this is going to be something uh, very important in the future. And for all this, many of our business processes which are as old as uh, maybe, uh, uh, some of them are as old as 50, 60 years or maybe even 80 years, many of these have to be the internet. You cannot continue to do things the way as per our model uh, you know, practices and uh, model patterns which are perhaps uh, so many years old. We have, we have been keeping, we, we are revising no doubt, but I think it calls for a quantum division. And, and I'm sure a lot of you who are there, uh, uh, some of you may not have even read through the entire report, uh, something which we used to do during our professional days, and of course later on we also find time on the interest. Uh, but all this has to be replaced by looking at best practices and how we can be adapted. I think this sharing uh, of knowledge across uh, the organization will help us uh, perhaps do away with a lot of processes uh, which currently are uh, significant or actually driving the others to criticize the working of the, of the finance department. So uh, this thought, this, this thought I'll put out some of the, there are a lot more things which are changing but I think uh, focus maybe on a few of these to start with. Uh, the national rail plan, I don't know how many of you have actually uh, gone through this. It is there on our website. The draft paper has been presented. Uh, this was prepared largely by rights in association with the ECOM, which is a global uh, consulting firm. Uh, some of the highlights, it's, it's a huge document, but I've just captured some of the highlights here. I don't know how much of this will finally be adopted and approved by the railway board. But uh, this does give a fairly good idea where we want to go in the next 20 years, 20, 30 years. Uh, starting with uh, uh, developing scenarios uh, for 2030 and 2050, we have to create uh, capacity ahead of demand, which is quite a challenging task. What we are saying is we are ready with the capacity and the demand materialize and surely we will be able to deliver the needs of the country. Uh, Years to come. Uh, one of the challenges which we have set ourselves is that we should increase the modal share of freight traffic uh, across the country uh, from other modes to railways. Currently, we have a share of 27 percent. So, uh, what we are saying is we should move this to 45 percent. Uh, obviously, this was there on the cards for quite some time. Speed of freight trains uh, will, we hope, it will increase to at least 50 kilometers per hour. And I suppose this will be very much possible if uh, the dedicated freight corridor comes into play uh, because these are all interrelated issues. So there is more capacity and more path for freight uh, operation. Obviously, its speeds will also increase. Um, cost cutting is also one on the agenda. So one of the targets set for ourselves in this uh, plan is that we should cut the cost of operation by 30 percent, and most of this cost is cut, reduced, should benefit customers. So it means a lot of uh, work ahead for costing, performance costing and so on and so forth. Um, new financing models and revenue streams are being looked at. Uh, this was actually featured in the budget speech and uh, more specifically the finance minister has said that we are going to focus on PPP models in the railways more and more. Whatever has happened in the past, the past successes or failures, whatever they are, we are going to review these and we will have to focus on PPP. Uh, the private sector, uh, surely action has taken uh, place to bring them in, in upgrading uh, stations, operating stations, uh, operating trains uh, on about 150 routes, all this is on the cards and I am sure this uh, the, the uh, results of the exercise which are uh, there to get uh, offers from these uh, private players. Uh, in the next one or two years, we should be able to see some success on that, finalizing this. One very major, uh, uh, what should I say, initiative has been almost an initiative matching the gauge conversion initiative of the last uh, three, four decades ago, two decades, three decades ago, has been uh, the decision to electrify all BG routes by 2023. 20, 
this will actually uh, perhaps decongest a whole lot of routes, especially areas where uh, you know you do not have uh, uh, limited traction. Um, the DFCs, good thing is that uh, these DFCs are hoping uh, to become operational next year and another five new freight corridors, the uh, project reports are already prepared. Uh, say on the safety side, yeah, the automatic train protection system is being talked about. All the level crossings will be eliminated on the golden quadrilateral. So these are good uh, initiatives as far as passenger confidence in the railways is concerned. We also propose to run semi-high-speed trains on the golden quadrilateral as well as the hybrid uh, quadrilateral of the quadrilateral. Um, multi-tracking, which was never uh, on the cards earlier, uh, this has been approved and many congested routes we were to see even not only a third line but also a fourth line. So all these are part of the rail plan. And uh, I, I will perhaps uh, stop at this as far as the big picture is concerned. Let us now start getting into what we need to the last part. Yes, that's the last uh, thing which is uh, really amazing. I, I was really happy to note that study for this rail plan it was based on um, GIS mapping of the entire rail network. This has been done in a very short time. Uh, what this GIS is going to be used for on a real time basis is that traffic simulation from uh, traffic simulation uh, models are going to be developed on a real time basis so that our investments are focused in a better way. Today, works program investments uh, typically are based on data which is around three years old, uh, which is not verified, which is not validated. So if we can have something which is more real time, then we can immediately stop in an area which perhaps is not going the way uh, it was planned. And you can even uh, reroute your resources to some alternative work, even in the same area in a different way. So I think this GIS uh, mapping uh, of the entire rail network uh, has been a very apt utilization of technology. Surely, surely, Birbal, ये एकदम बात है बहुत सही कहा कि कभी-कभी हिंदी में भी बात करें। ये actually जब मैं सितारा में बात करता हूँ, आधे लोग हिंदी में ही समझ में पूछते हैं कि हिंदी में बात करें। तो ये जो GIS का जो initiative है, ये शायद बहुत बढ़िया होगा अगर का जो फायदा है capital investment के लिए हम लोग इसको इस्तेमाल करें। uh, let us look at uh, one of the things which we expect the airplanes to And here, when I explain to you, this doesn't mean that it's not the PFA that's talking about. Just to recall that these are all the people who are the deputy editors, the PCOs, the SAOs, these are all the accounts officers. Their demand is that it should start looking at uh, what we call strategic planning and goal setting. Uh, it is a graphic hand. I would like you to see this. E other EMV. EMV comes from a vision, mission, or value. Uh, railway may be about come as what he is. White paper, a prepared work at the boss are a minister. The people, this is what they are saying. They say, Give me a white paper on this. So we have got about five or six white papers in the past. And uh, ये जो BMV है, this is more a corporate, corporate private sector idea. But even public sectors now are looking at vision, vision. तो रेलवे के लिए जो vision statement है, you can say broadly it is going to be developed on the basis of this rail plan. अगर BMV बन गया, और strategic objectives और strategic challenges ये हम identify करके ये BMV के साथ alignment करेंगे. So we will have what is known as a strategic plan for the future. So in 2030 or 2050, we are making an action plan. This action plan is the finance role of the finance. First of all, action plan is built on we must have a target in mind. We must decide what is, where are we today and where are we going to be. 
uh, always we are very uh, you know always we are very ambitious but target should be meaningful they should be achievable at the same time they should also be focused on what we want uh is ke liye resource allocation is also another important today if uh, we plan resources the only resource as a pensio we look at is money we do not bother about manpower we do not bother about uh, contract management how much will come from within how much of it will be done with collaboration how much of this will be outsourced so resource allocation is now perhaps one of the key things which an pensio should plan for and once we do this is the measurement policy whatever target you have set it should not only be a financial target it should be a physical target it should be a social uh, target in the sense we should also look at it is ka jo jaise hum log aaj kal sun rahe hain climate change ka jo impact hai there is something for environmental target so we must have something like a carbon credit target uh, and so on and so forth तो ये मेजरमेंट जो है इसका वी मस्ट हैव अ करेक्ट यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट एंड इफ यू हैव अ करेक्ट यूनिट ऑफ मेजरमेंट देन योर टारगेट कैन बी मॉनिटर्ड एज वी मूव अराउंड एंड अल्टीमेटली वी मस्ट ऑलवेज बी रिव्यू देयर वी आर वी कैन नॉट से कि 6 महीने के बाद इसको देखा जाए वी मस्ट हैव नाउ दैट वी आर ऑलमोस्ट ऑटोमेटेड ऑल आर अकाउंटिंग प्रोसेसेस एंड वी आर एबल टू गेट रियल टाइम डेटा रिव्यूज मस्ट बी इवन मोर focus and more people so agar ye cheez if we are able to look at strategic planning goal setting and review in a more faster way then uh, and ye it should not happen only in pockets we must ensure that this happens in an aligned manner starting from the core it should flow down to the gml stream it should flow down to the drml stream and the drm also should be able to convey to the cluster so this ke liye i for us very uh, very clearly remember that alignment of these goals and targets is very important you cannot expect uh, headquarters doing something and you just do something else. and this happens this is quite some of what i think there is no alignment sometimes the headquarters which uh, different uh, targets set kar raha hai aur you know apne aap kuch aur kar so i think here we need to look at uh, a more aligned way of working One of the roles of the FSO should be to see that this is focused and it is. Now let us look at possible another role for the FSO: capital structure and funding. In Zamane, we only had the uh, IRFC. That was, and when IRFC came in, we thought, "Oh my God, uh, capital budget ke alawa aur kahi se bhi log paisa le rahe hain." We were very happy that. Uh, no irfc started funding uh, uh, acquisition of uh, rolling stone but iske sath sath we also found that we need to bring in money from other than irs and when we started looking at money from other than irfc they said the arka now for instance uh, a lot of these uh, uh, financial institutions global financial organizations when they started saying we bring money in they said ki hame aapka jo accounting system hai wo samajh nahi aata to we uh, i think in the last 6 uh, 7 years this focus on accounting reforms started increasing and uh, this uh, translated to first presenting our system of account from cash accounting to payroll now is this going to continue and is it going to be the uh, future of uh, railway government accounting i do not but surely we will have a parallel set of accounts in the accrual mode so that when people who want to invest money in railways come then uh, they will be able to understand our accounts better as if yahi ek karan hai jo main samajhta hu accrual accounting railway mein Yeah, and surely it will give us a much better idea of our profitability, uh, of our uh, type of assets we utilize, of the liabilities we have. Our commandos have liabilities of the railways. We do not utilize many of the liabilities uh, which we should be utilizing in the uh, commercial undertaking. Uh, Abhi tak we were saying that we are a social service organisation. So, what liability is, we should take care of it. So, what assets we have, we should take care of it. ये वाज़ 
mismatch in our presentation to a lot of people who wanted to invest in it. Today, we have this accounting problem that is the most important thing that is the most important thing. And the FNC will have to try this. Nobody else will try this. Outcome budget. Outcome budgeting is actually a whole different session. But I think that all of you who have been in the outcome budgeting session have been in the outcome budgeting session. I think it is important to realize that we should work not to outputs, but we should work to outcomes. Why are we doing this business? We should understand why we are in the transportation business. Or transportation business say kya phaira hoga? What is the outcome I am trying to do? What is the measure of the outcome I am keeping track of? So this is something which is part of the accounting reform process. But here it is, kya shayad aane wale dino mein events ko kya kabi and the third thing is, how do you design and deliver your business if you do not understand how to cost your performance? You must cost your performance. Abhi tak jo costing models Indian railways pe hai, they are all post facto. Post facto ka matlab hai, jo ho gaya hai, uska khali analyze karke we used to say, this is my cost of train operation. This is the cost. Cost per passenger kilometer mujhe itna ho raha hai. And it is based on our revenue accounting model or uh, you know whatever our classification we fixed a few years ago or a few decades ago. Lekin dunia ke bahar, uh, railway ke bahar jo other costing systems and transportation sector, they have changed quite a lot. We do not have benchmarking to compare because we feel that we are uh, quite different and we are perhaps winning. लेकिन ऐसा नहीं होगा, ऐसा नहीं होना चाहिए, because unless you have a benchmark in transportation sector, compared to maybe the airways or compared to roadways, maybe the highways, highways costing is also very interesting as far as capital structure is concerned. We must look at some of these things and improve our costing methodologies so that we can improve the delivery, we can improve the design of our system. So, this, I think, is something as far as capital structure is concerned, which we can understand better through accounting reforms. Of late, we have heard of a lot of institutional funding. First of all, when Suresh Prabhu Ji came, they said that they are giving the LIC money at a very good rate. Of course, the rate is different, but quite a lot of money started coming in. It's a different matter that people not spend as much as was coming in, but it was a good beginning. IRFC or capital budget, which the finance minister announced, kya karta tha. Iske alawa, LIC was willing to come, and some others also started saying we bring in money. So, ye jo institutional funding ka jo concept hai, for the first time we realized that we should link it up to the outcome of the project, not on what we need, but what we need. Funding became a very important part of our role in the railway board as well as the zonal railways. And obviously the outcomes we are looking for is we can just the network, throughput increase karna hai or we need to generate internal resources or all this we said we will bring in more of IP, our system will be improved. Chris ka jo system hai is me, that started coming into play and project monitoring modules also started coming into this. So institutional funding the FNCO has now uh, got a very important for Now what about the processes? Uh, so so I can, uh, what about the process? Domestic funding, FDI, PPP model, GSRA, these are all things which have been talked about. Uh, we have got, we have set up two uh, Doko manufacturing plants in Bihar. This is the Habib railway station ka model ek aagya hai. PPP model mein aur Bhati modernization of railway station ki hone wale hai. So all these things would actually require a lot of due diligence. Jo trial run hota hai, uske itna detail mein nahi jate hai. Lekin uske baad when the investment picks up and the levels of participation from various parties picks up, then the finance and accounts officers role in doing diligence increases. So this case we have got DIPP guidelines, 
और ये जो प्रोजेक्ट फीजिबिलिटी रिपोर्ट है इसमें जब वेटिंग होती है वी मस्ट बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज नॉट जस्ट यू नो फाइनेंस कंकरेंस जैसे हम देते थे फाइनेंस प्रपोजल्स के लिए कंकर्ड नॉट कंकर्ड ये नहीं चलेगा वी मस्ट बी एबल टू मेक इट मोर कॉम्प्लीट सो दे शुड बी इन्वॉल्व वेटिंग एंड एट ऑल स्टेजेस वेदर इट इज आर एफ क्यू स्टेज आर एफ पी स्टेज वेदर इट इज कंसेशनर एग्रीमेंट ऑल दीज रेलवे बोर्ड के जो मॉडल्स हैं All these uh, agreements must be gone into detail, and ye, uh, you would have noticed a lot of JVs have been formed uh, uh, on various railways uh, with these private operators. These JVs ke jo concession agreements, hai, all these are always getting into controversies. So we must, as attendees, go more into uh, the process of uh, doing due diligence, and this diligence will not only be from a pure finance angle. it should also be able to face the test of the regulator so broadly funding and capital structures railway is no longer only a government india entity it will have involvement lot of our assets will also be owned and managed by private operators so you can't call yourself though you may not be disinvesting in railways uh, per se uh, you will be having a lot of involvement of the private sector Uh, जैसे ये प्राइवेट ट्रेन्स का जो ऑपरेशन का जो टेंडर चल रहा है द प्राइवेट ऑपरेटर विल हैव टू ब्रिंग इन द ट्रेन्स द ट्रेन सेट्स हैव टू बी गॉट इन माय हैंड व्हिच मींस दैट दो इट विल बी एन एसेट व्हिच विल रन ऑन द रेल नेटवर्क इट विल नॉट बी ओन बाय अस सो द कैपिटल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द इंडियन रेलवे इज गोइंग टू चेंज सो वी नीड टू लुक एट हाउ बेस्ट वी कैन इन्वॉल्व आवरसेल्स इन दैट सी दैट यू नो द राइट शॉर्ट ऑफ रिटर्न on this investment is happening the bid process management is also different our earlier tender system will no longer be relevant but there are various stages where uh, bids will be processed you have uh, pre bid meetings you have uh, uh, request for uh, you know qualification you have request for the proposal and uh, there's a big gap between them you have also have to change some of the conditions in between so these things have to be done in a proper legal manner and also as per the guidelines of the central government you can't work in the railways independently and say here there is strict guideline as per well as it is because baki sectors may be ye jo pcp models wagera hain inke liye dipp guidelines already prescribed hain and we have to go by those rules so let's go on to yet another new aspect of uh, Now the role we should be looking at. Uh, this is risk and process management. Risk management, I mean, that very clear. Me, Indian railways, me, I have not seen during my 35 years of service. I have not seen any, uh, you know, structured way in which you anticipate a risk of a particular uh, operation or whatever, and then whether you can change the process according. Zada se zada kya hota hai ki agar statutory auditor our cndg gives a report uh, we will see the draft para we will see agar aur yahan wahan thoda kuch change karna hai to dekhte hain risk is never pre assessed risk is always brought out as a consequence of a draft para we say acha ha theek hai ye ho sakta hai in fact very very few of us admitted to risks pointed out by the uh, auditors and uh, in a way that was what was the uh, working in those days बट आजकल क्या होना चाहिए देर इज इन मेनी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन देर इज फंक्शन और पोजिशन फॉर चीफ रिस्क ऑफिसर और दिस चीफ रिस्क ऑफिसर आई थिंक द बेस्टिग्नेशन हैज टू बी दैट ऑफ दर बिकॉज यू कैन यू नो हाउ दी गोल्ड इन्वेस्टमेंट सो वी हैव टू सी वेदर दिस रोल वी कैन प्ले एन एफेक्टिव दैट इज इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ रिस्क आइडेंटिफिकेशन रिस्क प्रायोरिटाइजेशन रिस्क मिटिगेशन एंड रिस्क रिपोर्ट ये बहुत जरूरी है इसके आगे जब हम रेगुलेटर के रिचीव में आ जाएंगे वो पूछे कि आप कैसे ये रिस्क आपने क्यों आइडेंटिफाई नहीं किया वाई वर यू नॉट अवेयर ऑफ दैट दिस थिंग वुड हैव हैपेंड वाज इट आल्सो फ्लैग एंड व्हाट डिड यू डू टू मिटिगेट इट सो दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच वी हैव टू कीप प्रिपेयरिंग आवरसेल्स फॉर अनदर रोल व्हिच वी आर नॉट परहैप्स डूइंग फुली एज private sector or the public sector is that of an internal auditor please remember this is not internal check 
internal check is our bread and butter function. But internal auditing, jo hai, this is different. In internal auditing, mein, there's less of transaction audit. We can give it to IT based systems. Transaction audit, jo hota hai, keep picking all various transactions and see whether the process is followed or not. That's different. But an internal auditor role is different. He will look at the processes, he will look at the risk impact, and he will also suggest process improvements. Ye kaam abhi statutory auditor karna or karbi Lekin agar hum ye within the department, if we are able to recognize it and do it before the statutory auditor, then I believe the value addition we bring to this becomes much more. Because a statutory auditor does not do 100%. He does only a random check. He also does it several years after the event is over. But if we can do a concurrent internal audit uh, function, I think this will become uh, a very key role and bring value addition to the organization uh, as is being done in the uh, private sector organizations. Uh, as I said, her cheese ka jo process hai, ye aur har cheese ka jo system design hai, this is something which uh, I remember in our earlier days. The FHCO used to be involved. If there was any joint procedure order or process order was being drafted, the financial advisor was asked to do this. So that he gives a totally unbiased and a third party impression about, uh, comment on whatever joint POs are being made of. But more importantly, when you look at processes across the organization, they must all be aligned with the ultimate objective of the organization. We do things which the right hand doesn't know and the left hand is taking full advantage of it. So this process facilitation or system designing ka jo role hai, which many private sectors have actually benefited from and maybe some of the good public sectors also have benefited from. Uh, this I think we must provide. The FNCO must become an important part of it. He need not be a stumbling block in this. Many times people think that the FNCO process so he will simply cut off uh, to our powers. This is where I think we need to change the impression of the others. And we should facilitate the process and we should be able to improve the system. So uh, I think we should help in formulation and testing of processes and uh, how we can actually mitigate a risk or how we can transfer this. These things are the three things that I Risk, inter audit and process or system design. I think is something which in the very near future we must realign our skills. If necessary, we can uh, you know, request uh, some institutes to give us uh, training. Uh, some courses can be attended by many of our accounts officers. Because we uh, know the full picture, we know the broader picture of whatever operations are happening. We are involved almost uh, in touch, we keep in touch with almost all the departments. And the system integration is perhaps best known to a finance officer, not to perhaps a signaling officer or maybe a commercial officer. They will know their own individual functions, but the FNCO is always blessed with having a, a helicopter. So these things, if we add to our meeting of hope, then I think we have to do that. I will go on to. Uh, this particular uh, aspect of enablers and hacking. Kai baar log ye kehte hain ki ye sab hi hai, lekin hume kya karna hai? Ye sab aap jo roles ka jo definition de rahe hain. What is the change I would bring in myself? So I think the first thing is uh, as a function, uh, we must not only be conquering, we must be facilitating. Kai uh, baar ye ninda ki jaati hai ki Accounts uh, is always conquering, and if they don't conquer, project will not be happening or the proposal will not go. And this is a suggestion. So, we must give this new attribute of facilitating a proposal. Facilitating a proposal will actually bring out this way for a humble demand. And this, I think, a lot of us do not do. We are guilty of not doing. Proposal dekhte hai, we see whether it is as per the rule book, if it is not, we say not confirmed. But we must facilitate the proposal. Is there any better way we can do it? And that is where you need it. So, 
एक जमाने में देश से फाइनेंस ऑफिसर इधर Fear that the department itself will be affected. 
FNA department will remain and the people who are doing the FNA work will continue to do the FNA work. That is something which nobody can change. Because this is a function internationally, globally, essential, accepted as essential in the economic of an organization. So this is something which I thought I would clarify. Uh, at least uh, for now we should not be finding any uh, doubts or fears in this extent. Uh, I went through some Fortune 500 company uh, reports and also if you see Wikipedia. There are very interesting uh, functions and designations which report to the CFO. Uh, I will just, and these are only some of them are put here, very interesting, some of them are very interesting and they are more or less in line with what we have discussed so far uh, as to what should be our new uh, role. Jaise Chief Accounting Officer the role hai, wo abhi bhi hum kar rahe hain. Not CAO, CAO is Accounting, Accounts Officer ya Accounting Officer bhi hai role abhi hum kar rahe hain. Lekin aise kai saare roles hai, public sector, private sector mein, jo hum kar rahe hain, lekin uska hum kab, humara pura usme skills develop nahi kiye hai and we don't have the authority. For instance, let us see a thing like Chief Knowledge Officer ya Chief Process or System Officer these are uh, designations and titles available uh, with people who have worked in the finance department. Just a restructuring officer, yeah, investment officer. These are something which we are doing day in and day out in our uh, present role. But we are not being given the teeth nor the expertise. Uh, investment, we know a lot of decisions are taken by the uh, member finance by the railway board, by the various uh, you know, CFAs in the zonal railways. Like in this case, we do not have a structured way of working. We do not have, for instance, any uh, circular or anything which talks about the modal provision or our business processes. The investment is like this. We must be able to marshal all these things together. For instance, no research is going on. Chief research officer. Yeah, the research it has a structured function is not happening. It is uh, there only in the railway board, and there is some directorate called efficiency and research. But this teeth or what I mean is the guy who can actually be held responsible for this. That is not being defined, and I think we need to look at this a little more. So. Uh, I have put down some ideas here and some of you can think about this. He, jo abhi, the only thing which we can continue to do is Chief Accounting Officer, jo, uh, this could be uh, in charge of a Chief Budget Officer's role, a Chief Treasury Officer's role, uh, just say abhi existing sections and books and budget, cash and pay, uh, or pension and PM, these could all be in this particular role. Then you have a chief strategy officer's role, uh, where you look at business resources, where you look at research, where you look at its strategy officer's role. And uh, typically this is, you know, we have got sections which do traffic planning. Now, uh, here traffic planning and you know, finance conference is the only thing, we do, but we should be able to take over the entire traffic planning uh, function. Uh, similarly, establishment finance, where, you know, the cost of human resource input is controlled here. Then you have the assets and supply chain management. Typically, this is your stores and workshops. Stores, we have pura inventory control of the hand, and your assets are there in the workshops, you control that from there. So, you must be able to bring this alignment of a chief strategy officer. Uh, then you have a chief, chief investment officer, typically, is uh, somebody who would look at how much money is coming in, how much of restructuring we need how much of investment we need to do. So all these things uh, will get inputs from investment finance, your merger acquisition, public sections in traffic accounts, so on and so forth. Another possible role, as I said, was uh, put risk under one person, chief risk officer. So you could have a chief process officer, you could have a chief internal auditor, a chief risk officer. All these things could look after uh, new sections which will look at internal order, risk management, process and systems. Chief Data Analytics Officer. Actually, we already have a statistical cell. We have an efficiency cell. Uh, reporting uh, all our 
reports, whether it is half yearly area report, half yearly suspense review, or so many progress reports, all these are going from the efficiency section. But what is the outcome of these things? Is anybody sitting down and capturing the knowledge with, which is arising out of this? I think all this has to be uh, redone in a better way. Base structure will remain the same, but the object of this role, this function of data analytics will change totally. Compliance is another thing, as I said, we are going to have a regulator, a rate regulator in place, and once he is in place, we have to look at how much of uh, regulatory compliance we will be able to do, how much of legal compliance we will bring out. For all this, I think you need to have uh, the law set. Sir, muted, sir. No voice. No voice, sir. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. Yeah, please, my good girl. So, um, let me start. At, at what point was I off? Can anybody just tell me? Okay, fine. Okay, that's okay. So I will I will just take off from this place itself. Um, all that I'm saying is a possible structure where a corporate office of the department could have uh, these functions. We, we could possibly have some of these uh, functions. Uh, like Chief Compliance Officer coming in. Um, I was quite disappointed to note that uh, in the latest railway board restructuring, IT as a function is now with member operations and business development. Uh, in the last restructuring, it was with the member of finance, it was with the financial commissioner. And uh, it's quite, quite strange that this has moved on to the uh, the traffic, member traffic. I am not uh, casting any aspersions on this, but I think uh, the prerogative of uh, the accounts department, which was in the past, the FNCO, in, in, in giving information about data, uh, analytics, statistical officer, all this was so much linked with IT as a function. IT as a function today, perhaps because uh, passenger reservation and freight operations are largely being done. Uh, under the control of the public traffic, uh, this function has gone there. But I think it should be shared equally because there are a lot of non-operational data collection also which happens, which needs to be analyzed, which would be useful for outcome budgeting, which would be useful for performance costing. So I think as a function, it should be shared by the finance uh, head as well as maybe other heads. But to uh, look at it uh, in the present context of it, Totally being under the operations head uh, would call for a rethinking, is my personal opinion. So, like in the past, the IT and EDP should be with the finance function. The audit, internal audit should be with the finance function. The professional side of law should be with the finance function. And the technical management of all the data uh, convergence of all the technologies mm -hmm. should be under uh, the uh, finance function. So that we utilize this properly and we are also keeping abreast of the technologies. In a more uh, appropriate So this is something which I thought I would capture here in the different slide and I'm sure this will throw up a lot of ideas. It's not necessary that all of them be done at the same time. There could be a lot of other things which we could uh, bring into this. Uh, when it comes to uh, the present uh, setup we have, we as you all know have a lot of, uh, because of harder restructuring we have grown as an organization and uh, the top and also realign some of our functions. Uh, but while we do have a role, uh, we also have to bring in our responsibility. And there needs to be an alignment between the role and the responsibility in our department. Uh, currently, if you were to look at really the uh, administrative levels, we have uh, a vertical hierarchy uh, in each zone. We have an HAG and SAG at the JAG level. Uh, the horizontal spread is absolutely amazing. 
17 zones, uh, 6 uh, production units, and so many others, division workshops, and so on. So, uh, the functional spread, and here also you have different categories. Uh, we have pocketed them all into administration establishment, maybe there is an excellent uh, balance wing we have, the expenditure which wing uh, which keeps track of what we spend uh, by our budget. There's a cash and pay workshop and stores construction and so on and so forth. So you have a vertical spread, you have a horizontal spread, and you have a functional spread. Uh, but uh, while the roles are clear, I'm not sure whether we bring in any great responsibility. Uh, do we give a thought to aligning the responsibilities across all the organizations and uh, across all the uh, various uh, uh, sections of our organization, like? Is one workshop officer working exactly identical to another? Is the responsibility in one workshop officer's office the same as another? Uh, this is something which I think we need to bring uh, some clarity. Uh, they need to bring in, we need to bring in alignment both uh, horizontal and vertical. And finally, uh, there's this concept of service level increment in the expert. After all, as a department, we are uh, functioning for the benefit of our customers, our internal customer. Our internal customer is the rest of the organization. Every time there's a difference, they say, this is the accounts view and this is the executive. Finance view and the executive. So if you are working for the executive, I think we need to do a study of his needs and expectations. What does, uh, what does for instance, the chief commercial manager expect of the finance office? We understand his needs, we know what he wants of us. We do what we want as per what the court, court provides. But have we had a service level agreement anywhere? Uh, this service level agreement is a concept which actually strengthens our own. If we are able to say, this is the service I will provide to you at this level, which is in accordance with your needs, then you become more relevant to the organization. Otherwise, whatever you do will be stronger. And typically that has been happening because our goal is being eroded because we are not realizing our responsibility uh, as we should. So uh, if any of you have had ideas about uh, or some of you who have already worked in private sector or in uh, corporate sector, you would notice that there is a concept of a service level in it. Please think about this and this will actually help you align your role and your responsibility. You are responsible to your internal customer, namely the executive. You are responsible to the personal officer, your division as far as establishment is concerned. You are responsible to perhaps the chief uh, material manager, your uh, MPMA stores. You are responsible to the COR, the chief uh, construction uh, officer, uh, as far as the FNCO's role is concerned. But do you have an agreement between both of you as to what is the level of service you should provide? You have your own MPR, you have your own monthly progress report. But is the uh, is your user, is your customer, is your executive department, corresponding executive department uh, in agreement with them? We only see it at the time of the confidential report. We do not see it as a function. We look at the confidential report as an individual's confidential. And that is where I think uh, we need to improve on our uh, you know, alignment, we need to see. So to that extent, I thought to start with, in our, in our uh, confidential report uh, formats, uh, we must have at least uh, a few key result areas. I'm sure all of you are familiar with this word KRA. We must have at least six key result areas which should be standardized across the Indian regions. We must have a predefined performance indicator and we must have a predefined unit of measurement. So for all empty FNCO stores across India, we should be able to say that yes, these are the key performance indicators because that is what the CMM expects. That is what the stores officer, that's what the workshop officers expect. The unit of measurement must be the same. And how do you measure that? If you have a good performance indicator, you have a good unit of measurement. And all these must be aligned with the departmental codes. 
here when I say department codes, accounts department codes. And you must be able to correlate both the physical measures as well as the financial measures. Now suppose the chief MMM, uh, their, their uh, uh, target is to say, he says that we must be able to bring down, uh, say, our uh, stock, stock items at the end of the day, when we or something, should come down to this level. Is, are we aligned to that? If he says we need to dis dispose this much of scrap, are we aligned to that? So all the outcomes of their department and our associate finance, they must be alignment with those KRAs. We can't be having our own KRAs which are suitable for our own function. And then finding that uh, they are not in alignment with the other departments that we are actually looking at as our internal customer. So we could have, I am only suggesting a few six uh, KRAs. So you could have the rest of, because we are doing a lot of other work with other departments also. So you could have six KRAs which are in, uh, you know, common across the year periods. And you could have some others which could be dependent on that individual railway's performance or needs. For instance, FAC or traffic of all the zones, they have the same KRAs. The KRA is the same, but your individual targets will be the same, uh, will be different, your initiatives will be different, your action plans will be different. So if you have such a setup in your uh, ACR or annual competence, to start with, you can really compare whether you are aligned, whether all the accounts, the FNA department across the Indian railways are working towards the common goal. Or are you meeting the individual aspirations of the individuals and needs one another? Uh, you can also have target setting, as I said, should be different. And that can be agreed to between the FRAC and the FRAC. Uh, this is something we don't do. A few years when I was in service, this used to be discussed. That at the beginning of the year, you have a discussion of uh, what should be your targets and you write that in section 1 of your ACR, part day of your ACR. And then at the end of the year, it doesn't happen really that way, then you change the rules. But at least if you bring in some alignment in uh, the KR is this way, hopefully we will be able to work and most important, we will be able to establish our relevance in the organization. Otherwise, it becomes a few disjointed individuals taking away the glory of the service, glory of the department, or also bringing it down accordingly. So if we should not allow individuals in a service to really determine whether the service is needed. That is exactly what has happened and so I feel so sorry about it. A few people have brought glory to the service, a few people have actually destroyed our reputation for that. And uh, in the just happened that uh, so I think we want to reinvent ourselves, we want to change, bring in a better sense in our role, I think this is something to do. And I hope uh, at the end of the day, uh, we will be able to uh, you know, talk about this more confidently and more openly. Uh, I'm sure all of the 200 odd participants, more than uh, maybe 150 of you will have about uh, say another 10 years of service left, 10, 15 years of service left, please look at these things in an open-minded way. All these may not materialize. Some of them may materialize differently. But I believe it is necessary for us to change. It is necessary for us to keep looking at change. Uh, otherwise, we will only become vegetables in stagnant. And that's more damaging than the service itself becoming a level. Because you will start becoming as a so I, uh, I'm, I'm happy that uh, you know, we have uh, done this uh, session um, and also that uh, last number of you have found time for participating. We will now uh, go on to a few questions. Even if you are not able to think of any questions now, I have my Gmail there as well as my mobile. I'd be very happy to talk to you, uh, exchange your views uh, with uh, people who matter. We could uh, have a good debate, anything to disagree on various points or all, even otherwise, we could just uh, degrade this thinking during this pandemic. I am sure uh, we could be able to make the questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we will take questions, a few questions as uh, quickly as possible. 
So we, I think we are not about to unmute. Uh, Uh, sir, I am here, sir. Uh, I have uh, placed a couple of questions in the chat box. If you can answer, if you can just look yeah. at the regulator and the contract uh, regulations, I have asked a couple of questions. If you can just. Sure, sure. So let's go to that. Where, where are the questions? Chat box, please open. Can you once again come, please? Who is speaking? Yeah, uh, Anand here, sir. Anand here from Chennai. Yeah, yeah, good morning, Anand. Yes, good morning, sir. Morning. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, Anand, um, uh, your question is about, uh, please to speak a bit about the regulator whose offices like to come up. I think it should be something like try supported by the Parliament. Yes, you're very right, uh, Anand. Uh, it is, uh, we, we, well, we, well, we formulated uh, the guidelines. We said, yes, try. It should be something like try. The only issue which came up was on the uh, whether the tariff for the railways will be, uh, uh, you know, within the ambit of the, uh, you know, the uh, regulator, or will it continue to be with the uh, railway board? So yeah, I have the opinion that it should be within the ambit of the regulator, sir. I think that is a more objective way of pricing our tariffs and also ensuring that we. Uh, cost of our service, I mean, the, the efficiency of our operations is also in tune with the kind of tariffs which are. I mean, that's my that's my opinion. Very good, very good. Uh, and unless we have a fully autonomous regulator, it's not possible to have, uh, you know, commercially viable tariffs, which is both uh, good for the railways and for the customers which we serve, whom we serve. Very true, very true. So I think uh, that is likely to be the scenario, except that, you know, we have the obligation of the parliament to approve the demand for grants which is actually uh, trying to say how will you meet your expenses for delivering your performance uh, which is in terms of physical goods uh, like in all other sectors i think the railway board will uh, present its uh, uh, revenue requirement uh, which is typically in terms of demands 1 to 16 uh, present it to the regulator and the regulator will uh, approve the tariffs which will help generate that revenue, uh, that expense uh, from within the railways. I envisage, uh, uh, you know, something like uh, the tariffs, uh, you know, how the electricity, electricity regulatory commission is. Very correct. Yeah, very correct. You know, the different tariffs for different kind of users. Yes. And, uh, you know, uh, each uh, user will get an uh, opportunity to make a presentation and, uh, you know, suggest certain tariffs for the listing and then railway puts it through. And then the regulator takes a view of, as to where the yes. uh, tariff should be fixed for each class of traffic for the passenger and freight segment. Yes. I think so, so I think I think you got the hang of it, Anand, and I would be glad to take this up separately with you because you are showing a lot of interest and I will give you... Uh, you know, the final draft bill which we had proposed and uh, uh, which is under the consideration of uh, the government. Uh, coming to your second question, having worked in data projects, don't you think our contract regulations are obsolete and extremely one-sided where the railway administration is God and God can do no wrong? <laughs> though it fails, though it falls in the executive domain, don't you think we should quote the railway administration to bring in more modern and fair contract management systems? Uh, yes, uh, to some extent, uh, uh, I think there is some active work going on. Unfortunately, uh, in, in respect of contract management, uh, we, we in the railways are seem to be, uh, you know, ostriches uh, um, with, our, with our heads deep in the sand. Um, notwithstanding the fact that uh, there are regulatory bodies as well as uh, constitutional bodies Pointing on the defects in us, in our system, uh, we are not uh, changing. Um, I think now with the need for uh, opening up our uh, sources of investment and uh, those people asking us to, uh, you know, become more transparent in our contract regulations, especially the World Bank, the ADP, uh, we are bringing in fitting uh, conditions of contract yeah. and more, and uh, a lot of. It has been actually learned by the DFCCIL the hard way. So our colleagues in the DFCCIL have found that uh, this, is, and I am sure it's going to be even more tougher when we bring in uh, more uh, funding from international sources. 
uh, I'm sure we will learn a lot about this. I think that the EPC kind of a thing coming in, uh, fix our projects will go through this, uh, maybe the fitting regulations may come in, I think, I, I mean, I'm not too sure. That's absolutely. But the uh, DFC and RPNL are uh, adopting fitting regulations, I think, uh, in their uh, projects. I mean, Tata projects themselves have taken up some DFC for the... Uh, yeah, DFC, DFC, they have no choice, they will have to take up and many of them are tailor-made to predict conditions. But when it comes to other investments, I am not sure whether RVNL, I would like to know myself. RVNL, I don't think, has adopted predict. Uh, no. They are more, they are more uh, in, in, in tone with the government guidelines, the DIPP guidelines for uh, uh, the contract management. But I think we, we will get there sooner or later. Any more questions from participants? I mean, if there are, uh, just one more thing, sir. Uh, I mean, as a matter of introspection, I mean, you have served uh, more than three and a half decades. Uh, I, do, do you think that, uh, I mean, of course, your presentation also covers it, that we need to be more or, uh, sensitive towards the organization than our own departmental objectives? I mean, we aren't, I mean, I think you covered uh, quite a bit of it that you have to align yourself with organization goals. You have to uh, understand a little more about how the interior departments function uh, rather than be uh, obsessed with your own, uh, you know, departmental objectives of keeping uh, expenditure down and, you know, the other things. Actually, it was in, uh, when we joined service around the, uh, between 79, 80 or 81, around that period, the posts of DRMs and general managers were thrown open for IRAs yes. as, as a service. Please remember yes. the service. Yes. At that point in time, the argument given was that uh, we need to be more integrated with the functioning. It should be an integrated role uh, which will enable uh, the finance function to appreciate the role of the executive also. While I think many of our industrious predecessors did take that up as a challenge, um, at some point in time, we short change our and we uh, gave it the response that we will uh, we will take on this role of uh, becoming the RM and GM. But we continue to be, uh, you know, the typical uh, hand picking husband of uh, saying sorry, this can't be done when we get back to our positions uh, in the department. So, but a lot of our officers did well as uh, the RM. I mean, that's okay. I think that's that's in a different that's perspective. That's the tragedy. That's the tragedy. If individuals are going to determine the service and not the function as a whole, I think that is where we are losing now. And it's necessary for us to, uh, at some stage, uh, overcome that sort of a, uh, you know opinion which is gathering the ground uh, very rapidly. Uh, in the last, uh, I would say, last five years, six years, I think many of our decisions because of our inaction or because of our uh, you know, shallow thinking, we have lost the opportunity to rise to the occasion. Uh, if, whether it was the case of uh, you know, merging of the railway budget, whether it was the case of uh, bringing in uh, uh, funding from external sources uh, in the form of uh, uh, you know, the uh, UK markets and so on and so forth. I think, I think we have, we have uh, lost opportunities to exhibit our talent as a group. Uh, well, uh, having said that, there is no harm, there is no time lost, there is always time for change of this nature. We have to be, training is something which we keep to be, we need to keep on doing, uh, whether uh, uh, in the past we, we did well in the private sector, IRAs did very well in the uh, public sectors, but uh, again now the conditions uh, of the DOPP are changing, we have to gear ourselves to get more qualified, uh, take time out to learn what is happening outside the railway world and uh, yes, invite uh, all streams of uh, thought and knowledge from all over. Yeah, so so that was good and let's see if anybody else has got any other question, otherwise I think it's been a very active uh, group and a lot of, uh, I can see a lot of messages. Not really questions but uh, yeah, but there was one question about uh, privatization. Uh, where is that? Yeah, so 
It was something about a private life and she said, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there is a, there is a question about privatization, right? It talks about what is the need for privatization of under 50 rooms and our officers are not able to, uh, yeah, yeah. our officers are not able to operate without privatization. Right. Yeah, I think uh, this is Mr. Kumar. What is the need of privatization of 150 routes? Is, uh, is our officers not able to operate without privatization? I think here it is a question of um, how much we can, uh, you know, cut corners and see, bring in efficiency as well as cost cutting. Uh, privatization is essential because uh, as, as a government department, uh, we are not able to put our priorities right. Uh, if we have to bring in efficiency levels at the cost which we are currently incurring and also keep the customer expectations in mind. Um, all, the, all over the world it has been found that a privatized uh, effort is always better. You need to bring in a private player so that you will uh, concentrate your own on your core competence. It's not that we are um, giving the asset away and this is something which you should uh, realize. The Railway Act does provide for uh, outsourcing of a route. It does not provide for outsourcing of an entire uh, operation. Uh, if you give a route for operation, you can, what you are, you are within the legal uh, constraints of the Railway Act. So, while the infrastructure is ours, the station is ours and the uh, track is ours, what we are doing is we are asking somebody to bring in an asset and run the train and pay us some uh, haulage costs. Uh, so, you cannot really call this privatization. Outsourcing versus privatization is a much debated issue. What we are doing is a particular operation of our entire uh, business, we are outsourcing to a private player for a limited time with certain performance criteria and we will monitor it. Once that is done, then it will be very, very uh, easy for us to, uh, you know, bring in somebody uh, different, throw him out, bring in somebody different, but at the same time, we can bring in the efficiency, which we are looking for. Yes. Was, was that somebody else? Uh, the point is that whether the model of privatization which they wanted to bring in, sir, whether that is uh, really uh, uh, business friendly in the sense it is acceptable to the people who are people who are sorry, that was not clear. That question was not clear. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. This is Hira Vallab, sir. I am uh, Director of Finance with DFCCI. Yes, Hira. Yes, of course. It's amazing to interact with you, sir. But I, I, I just missed uh, part of it because uh, I saw by WhatsApp very late. Uh, uh, so many things to know from you and uh, so many uh, things. Whatever you right now said was so candid and uh, something we must... Uh, uh, have been thinking again and again, uh, but but uh, for for DFC, I would like to have a separate interaction like this, sir. And uh, right now, just few one uh, major issue is where should be the cost cutting exercise in railways as well as in DFC. That is the major concern. In fact, uh, uh, Honorable Minister also taking meeting day after on 25th. This is one of the areas where. He is emphasizing that cost cutting because maybe we are not uh, uh, so competitive in that uh, sense. What do you think that we should concentrate? Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, ever since I joined service or maybe a couple lot of others, there's a typical appendix 3A question. How do you increase revenues? How do you cut costs? And uh, solutions all over have been given. Uh, unfortunately, we have not had the will to implement it. I think we, a lot of us are aware and typically it would mean, uh, you know, the, uh, you analyze costs, you find on an ABC analysis which is the cost which is the most uh, impinging on us and we find that uh, it is the cost of uh, input, our labor input, our human cost, human resource cost. And if we are able to, uh, you know, put our heart and mind together to reduce the uh, cost of, uh, you know, the staff, 
and uh, there we end with that, we stop at that because we don't know how to go further because we are a government organization. I am sure we will be able to uh, find solutions. Uh, the other thing of course uh, is that we need to improve, we need to be innovative in our uh, operations uh, where we require the support of the uh, executive whether it is in uh, the infrastructure, whether it is in rolling stock operations, maintenance activities and when you see unfortunately privatization is a bad word but outsourcing is not and we have been doing this off and on. Uh, we have outsourced our catering for instance, but then we always keep low hanging stuff for outsourcing. We should take the bull by the horns. We should bring out the cost, the costliest uh, maybe uh, repair and maintenance activity which does not affect safety. That is what we should be outsourcing so that your costs are really reflected. 25% of our uh, demand 3 to 13 or our working expense is going to repairs and maintenance. 25% is as high as our fuel cost. And that is where I think we need to look at it. Operation costs you cannot bring down because we are still not very up in technology. But repairs and maintenance perhaps is something we can outsource, we should outsource. We should be able to outsource a whole lot of our ancillary uh, demands, ancillary demands in terms of, uh, you know, fortunately we have brought in this pension scheme, and a new pension scheme, so a big, uh, big uh, element of cost will now be taken care of by an external agency. Uh, but uh, there are still a lot of other elements of cost which we need to uh, you know, restructure and uh, monitor better. So yes, uh, Hira, we will, we will talk about uh, this shortly. And um, I have my mobile number here on this presentation which I can share. Otherwise, we will even keep in touch and we will see what best we can, uh, uh, you know, we have a chat on. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, uh, this one, uh, we don't want to go and... Santosh Kumar, who is this, this gentleman, Santosh Kumar wants to say something? No. Or is it uh, somebody else? Yeah. Hey, sir, uh, uh, you know, in another uh, interaction, uh, I with... Uh, Another uh, very senior IRS officer, my IRS officer, who has been in the private sector, Bharat Salud, uh, uh, and you know, he has dealt with railways from the private sector side, I think. Have you also dealt with the railways from the, from the data project side, sir? Yes, I have. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, the general response is that, the, uh, you know, by determining any kind of premier kind of a thing, uh, the main complaint is railway determined, railway thinks it knows what is best and it determines that there are the, I mean it determines the big document and all those things without actually you know first incorporating the suggestions uh, from the private, from what the private sector or the prospective bidders actually want. I mean, if, if you face that kind of a problem then uh, uh, we try to be, you know, we try to dictate terms. Uh, at the same time, we want the uh, private uh, participants to come in in a big way. Yes, very true. Very true. We we, we actually a uh, 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 partner is not treated as a partner in the business. Anybody else wants to? Yeah, anybody else wants to talk? Say something. Hmm. Yeah, I think we are done. Thank on you, behalf, sir. On behalf of Sitara, it's been a great pleasure to us. Sitara is indebted. Thank you, sir. We will take advantage of your experience in other fields and other sections also. Basically, when I was delving on this topic, people said this is a favorite question for Appendix 3A exam. And I am sure a lot of people at the section officer level got benefited. Thank you, sir. Words will not be sufficient to explain the candidness and informativeness and liveliness of this session. Some of the PFAs, sir, have requested me that uh, it will be good if I conduct uh, a session like this exclusively 
with the PFAs and with you. And uh, I would do so, sir, very soon. Thank you very much, sir. Once again, thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're done. Bye,